My name is Claude Boyd. Um, I'm a research fellowship here at Seattle Science Foundation. And today I will be talking to you about the 12th rib syndrome. We're going to go over a little bit about the, the syndrome, talk about it a little bit. And then we're also going to I'm also going to talk to you guys about possible etiologies that we kind of came up with and then how the 12th nerve is associated with the lumbar plexus. So a little background, it was the 12th uh, rib syndrome was first described in 1962. It's a pretty rare disease. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of it before. I know I didn't before I started doing this research project. So. Um, it's pretty rare. You won't see it in many textbooks. It's often misdiagnosed and underdiagnosed. Um, it's a diagnosis of exclusion, which makes it kind of difficult. And some of the um, different terms used in the literature has been, um, you can see it's clicking rib, rib syndrome, rib tip syndrome, painful rib syndrome, and intercostal neural neuralgia. So you can see all these different terms in the literature. All right, so um, the etiology is unknown. Um, so we don't actually know what exactly causes 12th rib syndrome. There are some theories. Hypermobility is kind of the most common theory. And this is, they think this theory is the most common. It's because the 12th and the 11th and 12th ribs are the free floating ribs. So they're not attached at both ends. So they have the tendency to possibly move more, which can irritate the 12th nerve, um, which could, runs right underneath the 12th rib, which I'll get into in a little later. Um, other theories could be direct trauma or indirect. And the one that we're going to talk about a little bit more in depth is rib variations. So rib variations have been reported to be between 0.04 and 14% with the most um, rib variation you see as um, cervical ribs. Um, this is a illustration provided by Dr. Tubbs, and this shows um, articulation between the lumbar transverse process and the 12th rib. So you can imagine that the spinal, um, the 12th spinal nerve comes out and it has to transfer, it has to come along the 12th rib. And you can see that articulation point between the transverse process and the 12th rib could cause um, an area of possible irritation to the nerve, which can lead to the syndrome. It's never been described in any literature. So we brought this um, possible etiology um, of the 12th rib syndrome to the forefront. <clears throat> so the epidemiology, it's greatest in women it's about three to one, and the review of, in our my review of the literature, we found it to be about seventy six percent in women, and usually it happens in like middle age, around forty two years old. There's cases uh, from as young as nineteen to as old as eighty. So there's a wide var variation, but um, yeah, so middle aged women is probably the most common you'll see them in. Um, so the presentation of 12th rib syndrome is what makes it so difficult to diagnose. Um, the, the patient typically, typically presents with um, chronic pain, which has been going on for months or years, and it can vary from anywhere from the chest to the back, abdomen to the groin, so any of those areas. And we'll talk about in the next slide why there's such a wide variety of um, the pain or why there's so many different places the pain can be located. Um, and it mimics many diseases such as nephrolithiasis, um, biliary tract pathology, peptic ulcer disease, or rib fractures. So all these diseases must be excluded before you can actually even think about making the diagnosis of 12 rib syndrome because you don't want to miss something major. Um, and then the pain is worse with flexion, rotation of the trunk, and rising from a seated position. So those are kind of some clues you can clue you in. But there's that there's no really other associated symptoms like fever, nausea. You don't really get those. It's just mainly a chronic pain syndrome. So a little bit about the anatomy of the 12th nerve and 
this will kind of give you an idea of why the pain can be found in so many different ways. Um, the 12th uh, nerve has one of the largest ventral rami, and it actually gives a communicating branch to the first lumbar, lumbar ventral rami. It then travels along the inferior part of the 12th rib. It um, goes in behind the kidneys and the lateral arcuate ligament before it perforates the aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis and then goes in between the internal oblique. It then um, joins the iliohypogastric nerve, which is part of the lumbar plexus, and they could give a branch off to the pyramidalis. So here you can see um, a schematic of the 12th thoracic nerve with the first lumbar and giving a branch off to the iliohypogastric. So the iliohypogastric nerve originates mainly from the L1 ventral ramus, but it can, like I said, get innervation from the T12 nerve. And the iliohypogastric supplies fibers to the transverse abdominis, the internal and external obliques, the posterior gluteal, and the suprapubic skin. So this is why when, if there's irritation of the 12th nerve, and it could be also affecting the iliohypogastric nerve, giving those branches off, causing the pain in the groin to the abdomen, and so this is why you get referred pain in the different areas and why it's so hard as a clinician to um, possibly pinpoint that the pain is coming from the 12th nerve. When you're having the pain in the groin, you might be thinking, you know, kidney stones, but um, in fact that the iliohypogastric nerve is actually causing the pain down there. So diagnosis, like I said, it's mainly clinical. You, you first you get all, you can get all, ultrasounds, um, upper abdominal ultrasounds, CT scans, x-rays, all these, all of them will come back negative. And actually the hooking maneuver is a physical exam finding that in the literature has shown to have um, a very good success in diagnosing 12th rib syndrome. And the way that the hooking maneuver works is that you hook your fingers underneath their costal car the costal cartilage right here and it will reproduce the exact pain that the patient is having. And this is a um, diagnostic of 12th rib syndrome. So the treatment options, um, you can initially try to use or analgesics such as NSAIDs. Um, you can tell, talk to the patient about it. You know the patient likes to, you know they don't know where this pain has been coming from and you've kind of diagnosed it as, or you've ruled out everything else and you've come up with 12th rib syndrome. So sometimes just, um, patient, um, letting the patient know will help them feel better. Um, then you can try local anesthetics, um, such as nerve blocks using, and in most of the literature, I saw that buvacaine and methylprednisolone were the main, um, main medications in the injection. And if all that is refractory, um, the last treatment you could do is rib excision. And um, there was a case report of four patients that had rib excisions and they, they had no more pain after that. So this could be a last resort. So in conclusion, um, you know, this is a rare s syndrome that you probably might not see, but you know, if you do have a patient with this chronic pain, maybe and all your other workup has been negative, keep this in the back of your head. Um, it could be useful, it can decrease the hospital admission of the patient, you know, it can decrease medical expenses for the patient, um, and you'll probably be very, um, it'll probably be a good way to get a good diagnosis there, all right? So, references, thank you very much, any questions?